Okay, when we're talking about peptic ulcer disease, it's important to know that uh, this is a pretty common occurrence. A lot of people might um, experience peptic ulcer disease at one point in their life. So let's talk about what it is. So it's really just a break in the mucosal lining of the stomach or the pylorus or the duodenum or the esophagus that come in contact with gastric secretions. So for example here, here would be the break in the mucosal lining. And what happens is when, when gastric acid is secreted into the stomach, that touches the, the wall there where that break is in that lining and that causes a lot of pain for the patient. So what are we gonna see in our patients and how do we need to take care of this? Well, what we're gonna see, first of all, is we're gonna see pain. Pain is gonna be the number one thing because as that gastric acid is secreted into the stomach, when it, if it touches the actual tissue, it's gonna burn, it's gonna hurt greatly to these patients. So if a patient has a gastric ulcer, we're gonna see this sharp nine pain 30 to 60 minutes after a meal. Now that makes sense because that's about when we're gonna start digesting the food, right? If it's a duodenal ulcer, it's gonna be one and a half to three hours after eating, okay? Now, it's important to just kind of understand that, that, that if, if you get a question on the NCLEX or in a, in a test about time frame with this, just think as the food passes where it's at along this, this uh, the time frame. So if it's 30 to 60 minutes after eating, we're gonna be talking about uh, gastric. If we're at one and a half to three hours after eating, we're talking uh, duodenal, okay? So how do we assess this? First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do an upper GI series. We're gonna do an e EGD. The best way to uh, see it is gonna be actually do EGD. What an EGD is, is here's our esophagus coming into our stomach, right? And here's the duodenum. So EGD actually takes a scope and it comes down with a little camera and it can actually look at the stomach, okay? So we want our patients to be MPO for a little bit before this, we don't want them to aspirate and we also wanna get a clean view. So we actually insert that little camera down there, or the physician does, the gastroenterologist, we'll insert a little camera down there and we can actually look at and identify these ulcers, okay? Other things that we might see, we might see hematemesis with our patients, which is just um, vomiting blood or we might see melana. Melana is gonna be um, blood in stool. Okay, so if, if we see the hematemesis, that's gonna be a sign of a gastric ulcer. And if we see the melana, that would be kind of an indication of a duodenal ulcer. And again, just think if it's coming up this end, it's higher up in, this, in the GI tract. If it's coming out the other end, it's a little bit lower down in the GI tract, okay? So melana, versus hematemesis. Okay, so how are we gonna manage this? First thing we wanna do is we wanna teach patients about different foods that are going to cause additional irritation. Things like coffee, cola, tea, chocolate, high sodium, and spicy foods. Uh, you might notice that with GERD uh, and with a couple other conditions we talked about here that, that these are kind of common foods that we want to have our patients avoid. So really just teach them about these foods, teach them to avoid them, if they smoke, teach them to stop smoking. Teach them to eat small and frequent meals. If they're bringing less in, that's gonna result in less gastric acid secretion, and so it might help with some of that pain there. Uh, teach them also to avoid aspirin and NSAIDs. The reason for that, of course, is that these can cause GI bleeding. Okay, so with a patient who already has compromised uh, GI system or, or uh, stomach, we really want to avoid uh, causing that further stress on them. Then we're also gonna monitor H&H &H for bleeding, hemoglobin, hematocrit, um, and of course, we wanna see if those numbers are going down and if the patient might have uh, might be bleeding somewhere that we can't see. Other things we're gonna wanna do is medically, we can manage it with medications, and then surgically, there's a couple different options that we can do. First of all, we can do H2 uh, receptor antagonists, histamine 2 receptor antagonists, and proton pump inhibitors. What both of these do is they decrease gastric acid secretion. They do it in different ways, 